Hello everyone. This video, I'm going to go over um, how I sort my boxes and the reason behind the different labels on the boxes based on what's inside of them. Um, this is a request from a comment on a on my base store video. So I'm going to go ahead and make that today as well as switching over to creative mode near the uh, in second half or a little so of the video to show the setup for how I built the shelf systems I use for boxes and for the pallet storage you see here in front of me as well. But let's get started on the boxes right now. <clears throat> so the green leaf is going to be obviously plant fiber. Makes the most sense when you twist plant fiber into rope. For me, whatever reason, I'm thinking rope is, you know, white. But with rope being a white leaf. Well, next to that, this one is the one that makes the least amount of sense because I ran out of colors. So for sprigs, I went with just a purple leaf because blue leaf is plants that grow by the water, which is where the clovers are. Clovers are near the water, so I go with clovers and blue leaf, sprigs, purple leaf, and that's in every basin uh, um, map. The yellow leaf is going to obviously be your dry grass, you know, it's almost the exact same color. And then the leaf next to it, this teal color, I had another green item I had to put in a box, and slime mold stalks make the most sense to put them as that, because there's not much else that really makes sense as far as shapes to put slime mold stalks in. So... For the six different leaves, the six different colors, and that's the reason, you know, that's what's in each each box in every uh, base that I have. Now, the orange teardrop looks just like a piece of uh, sap. So, obviously, that was a kind of no-brainer to make that to go there. And then right next to that, because you get sap at the oak tree, you also get acorns, which these two boxes have acorns in, uh, in them from the oak tree as well. The, they're used for building stuff and constru uh, you know construction and for the hammer. That's the next four boxes you see. The hammers are all for uh, all there for construction. So the black hammer is going to be the tops. Um, I wanted something that didn't look anything near this. That's why I went with the black, and then I have the brownish orange for the uh, acorn shells, which are very rare. Which is why you see this box is mostly empty. Next to that being purple, you can probably guess that's going to be berry leather because berry leather is purple. Berry leather is used in a lot of construction whether it be for the bed or certain bits of armor. So you need that for, uh, you need bare leather for that. You also use blue flower petals for construction, including making the mint mallet. So therefore that got the, the, uh, the blue hammer. Next to this is the closest shape I could find for a rock. So the basketball kind of shape and in gray. And I put my pebbles in here because with the introduction of pebble foundations, Pebbles have become kind of a big deal as far as how many you have to put in in your uh, anywhere in your world. And this is basically the construction side, whether it be basic construction plant materials or a little bit more um, complex materials you have to go collect. Well, maybe not flower petals, but the rest of it is uh, all construction material. Now we go to the section for arrows. We have white fuzz, which you need for the fletching on the arrow. We have the yellow arrow symbol for the um, thistle needles, kind of the same color right there. Next to that is the red arrow, which is your plain basic arrow, which has, you know, the red tufts on the end, and therefore you got the red arrow. Next to that is a green arrow, which obviously you're going to think gas arrow, because the gas arrows have the green gas effect on them now, the little visual effect, which is quite nice. I'm glad they don't look the same anymore. Next to that, a black arrow. Pro feathers are black, therefore the arrow itself uh, is also going to have kind of a black tint to it for it as a black arrow uh, symbol and then this one around the corner which i don't really use a whole lot is venom arrows i've made them because i have extra venom as you see but i don't really use venom that much but because venom is purple down here therefore a purple arrow underneath that you can kind of guess that's a bomb the brat burst go in there i use brat burst more for cutting grass than anything else except for the video i posted last night of when bob the bombardier wouldn't leave me alone and i had a bunch of brat bursts with me so i blew him up the red shovel is because you have to use a shovel to dig out clay. Clay is red, a red shovel. Uh, and this box has no label because there's nothing in it. It's not used right now. White question mark. Couldn't find anything that looked close enough to the dandelion. So I just made a white question mark since the top of the dandelion is white. Then we'll go around and I'll come back around the other stuff as well. We have these two. This is spider silk or web fiber. Sorry, web fiber. Because of the point sticking off the side, looks very similar to this shape right here. It was the closest thing I could find in all of these. And therefore, it got the white. And then, because you use spider or web fiber to make silk rope, which I don't have any silk rope in this one right now. I've used it all for 
that base you see kind of way off in the distance. I'm building a canopy style base up in that uh, the fallen oak branch. And I've used most of my silk rope. I need to make more. But this is for silk rope. So I have web fiber and silk rope. Uh, those two. One of the rarest um, in resources in the game being mint. Therefore, mint is kind of bluish. So I got a blue diamond being very rare. Now I have my four jerky box. The white jerky or white look like a, looks like a hot dog. But I, for me, it's jerky. So that's for gnat because gnat fuzz is white. Therefore, white for the gnat. Blue is going to be grub because grub goop is blue or blue. This is weevil because weevils themselves are black. Therefore, weevil jerky is black shape. And then green, the green jerky shape is because aphids are green. Going around and continuing on around, we have the orange, I'm sorry, yellow um, star because kind of inside the middle of aphid honeydew is a star. You see a couple things down here at the bottom. I have extra nectar that I don't have space for in the space. I need to move it. But it has kind of the little pieces sticking off that look similar to a star. Therefore, yellow star. And then yellow uh, water droplet is you know, nectar. Next to that, we have the black, looks like a chicken wing. Chicken leg, sorry. Chicken leg, not chicken wing. Because the cookie. Now, I do have acorn bit, I'm sorry. Candy corn cornlets in here from when the candy corn spawned during October. Next to that, you have the red apple piece. Because outside of the red, outside of the apple is red, and this one I'm actually going to change during this video is for the hot dog. Now, granted, this does make perfect sense for the hot dog; it does, but I don't want it to look anything like that. I want it to have that shape because it's also a type of food. I don't want it to have anything like this. I want it to be very noticeable that this is not a box of jerky. In other bases where I have multiple types of jerky in the same box, I use the red jerky symbol. And then that looks like a blue water dropper because I do have just canteens full of water. In here, a white uh, drumstick for food is for mushrooms. Acorn bits, that's kind of a dead giveaway. That, that, that is acorn bits in there because they look almost exactly the same other than the fact that they just, they're just they rotated a little bit. And, of course, uh, the kind of international symbol for healing itself is the red cross, but because these smoothies are green, this is the green cross. And it's the same thing in this box. <clears throat> now, this one is a purple smoothie uh, symbol because I've made several different types of smoothies. So I put all of my workers comp, all of my human food, hedge lord, green machine, all in here. This just is a box. Let me know that I have a bunch of smoothies in there of different types. So if I need any different one of these, I can come in here and grab some. The white star, I didn't really have anything else for bug rubber. Bug rubber itself is white and I just needed something that I would recognize as bug rubber. So I went with star. The black diamond over here because one at one point pro feathers were very rare so they became very precious you have the blue armor symbol here blue shield because armor glue super armor glue actually let me click on the correct way super armor glue on this one armor glue over here berry leather is uh, berry chunks are in here because it's used to make one or the other i can't remember which one it's been a while now this has a gray shield but actually makes more sense for it to have a gray weapon because quartzite is used to repair your weapon or your tool not all of them, but most. Whereas this is used to repair your armor. This is used to repair weapon. Now we get to the bug box. I'm going to start from the right on the bug box. though, Because you see the big purple eight-legged spider. because And it's purple because venom is purple. So therefore, eight legs, purple, jumps out of me that that is my spider box. Now, the bombardier's face and head is yellow. Therefore, the six-legged yellow symbol is for my bombardier. Got parts and boiling glands. Ants is kind of obvious. They're red, six legs. So I have all the different ant pieces in here. Ladybug heads are black. Therefore, they get this one. The, uh, what is that? The six-legged black symbol. The insect. Now we go to this green six-legged uh, insect symbol is the larva and then i do it more because for you get acid glands from them i know you get acid glands from soldier ants as well but i'm not putting that in the ant box the ant box is already full enough whereas larva has space so it goes in here now this weird kind of dull purple the darker purple not the you know, i don't want to do that i wanted to go more of the darker purple i'm pretty sure there's an actual name for the color but i don't know what it is it is going to be my stink bug parts 
There are no gas axe in here because when I get gas axe, I make gas arrows. Now getting back to the bug box. The blue box here with the little insect on it is for grubs. Reason being grub goop is blue. Therefore I went with that since we don't have a good grub symbol. But you get grub goop being blue. Therefore I can make that justification. And then now this one you can make two different ones really. It has the white insect symbol or it could be the white fuzz symbol. Either one works because that's what's inside. The gnat fuzz. And that is why gnat jerky, which is back over here, is white because gnat fuzz box is also white. And then this teal color is going to be for the weevils. There are ant eggs in here for when I make uh, rat burst bombs. And the only reason this is teal and not black is because I don't want to confuse the two boxes between ladybug and weevil. Now that is how I have all the boxes sorted in here to include the boxes, the extra boxes I needed on the floor because the boxes surrounding the room were not enough. As you see, I have three boxes here with a little uh, human shape on them in different colors. That is for when I play multiplayer, if I had three people join me, they each get to pick one box and that's the box they go in. They get all the armor they need, all the weapons they need, the canteen, food, and if they need, you know, of course I'll grab some um, healing smoothies from over here. But each box is fully stocked with multiple sets of armor, weapons, including the new stuff, and some food. And each one of them is set up that way. Now, in every one of my bases, by the bed, somewhere close to where you would sleep, is a box with a question mark on it. That is my box to put whatever random stuff I want in it. It's my kind of just junk drawer type thing, but I have it a junk drawer box. And in this particular base, because I have a, uh, a, a uh, armor dummy that when I take the armor off of it, it puts the armor in my inventory, plus leaves the armor on the dummy or vice versa, I think which way it works. And I've gotten extra armor off of it. So I have more than enough armor. Kind of wish when you would recycle something, it would give it back to you as like some of the parts and pieces when it comes to that stuff, but it doesn't. Now we're going to go over to the aircraft carrier. Now the aircraft carrier is where I keep all of the items that come specifically from the pond. Eelgrass strand, lily pad wax, sunken fishbone, koi arm, koi scales, all of that is going to be here on the aircraft carrier, which I will be doing a video at some point on how I built that. I'll even do a video on the logo, not, not so much for the logo, but because the top section of the logo is very minimal inside, but there's an entire base fit in the top section of that, of the, of the logo. And it's to be more if we're doing a uh, tiny base with all, everything you need in the base. So you see I got boxes in there, but we'll come around here. So you see we have a three section wide stack with seven boxes across the row. So I have 21 boxes out here and all of them are labeled uh, accordingly. Let me change that label. And this one, like I said, is a jerky box that has multiple types of jerky in the box. And therefore it is the red kind of like hot dog symbol. I know we have the hot dogs in the game, but I'd rather use this. I have thistle needles and actual arrows. This is a random just chunks, bits of armor or uh, armor glue in it. But the rest of those all match up from this base to the last base. Even flower petals, um, slime mold stalks, berry leather. Now here's where the, the box are all from the uh, pond. The orange shield shape goes with the orange koi fish scale because it gives you kind of the same shape and almost the same color. If you look at it there, it's kind of close. Makes sense. Now, lily pads are green and circular. This is the closest thing I could get to a circle. The lily pad wax goes in here. The next two of that are going to be, um, this is eelgrass strand. I didn't really have anything more other than the color. So I went with the star. Just kind of, it jumps out at me that I know exactly what that is. And I've been... In and out of this box a lot, you can see. But I kind of have an I, I already know what it is without uh, having to open it. This is water boatman fins. Um, I didn't have a good brown. We used to have a brown, and they changed the color scheme a couple months ago. And I could go with orange, and that probably looks a little bit better. I could go with orange. That still works. I mean, it makes sense to me. I know what it is. And the white skull, you know, that looks like a looks like a skull. That's where you know bones the same color. So it kind of just reminds me of bones, sunken bones. This is the closest shape I could get for 
the slime lanterns and they're green so it makes sense for them to be here so when i want to go underwater i bring that with me because it's it's the only effective light you have underwater. We're back to another spider box. And it's purple because the venom you get is purple. And you also get the diving bell spider uh, uh, chunk from you know being in the pond. So that's why this is the only spider box on this boat. It's the only real bug box really because there are no bug boxes here. And then inside in the bunk area. Six bunks. Six quote unquote wall lockers. Complete with liquid gills, workers comp for when I want to carry, you know, if I was, when I was building this boat, because you're on the water, you have to bring all of your building materials in. There's nothing, you know, really close by that made it go a little bit faster. Acorn, no, excuse me, acorn bits. This is nectar because there's a lot of nectar right across the, the pond. I have no clue why there's a uh, torch in there. Your healing smoothies again, and canteens of water. And as always, a box, the junk box. Where I can put whatever I want in it. <clears throat> Including a lot of uh, these uh, torches because, well, can't, they don't work underwater very well. So I have to swap them out. And now I will switch over to creative mode and do my how I set up my, um, my shelf systems for my boxes as well as for my pallets. I don't use the shelf system on this area. This is one of the few bases where they're spread out. This one in purple, they're spread out pretty well. The rest of the bases are all stacked up. So give me just a moment. I'll be right back. All right. Now we are back here in creative mode. I can see I've already laid out a bunch of foundations so I can work in a nice flat space. And I'm just going to go over my shelf system that I use for setting up boxes as well as pallets. So we're going to first do the squared off version because there is a way to set it up on a, uh, on a slant, uh, which is what I have on my purple base. But for now, you see, I set up a wall at each end. I have the floor counts as one of the shelves. I have the middle shelf, and then I have the very top. Now, to keep your boxes from hanging off the edge, if you're worried about you looking a certain way, you can either build these in, in the real game or just put up the blueprint. Because if the blueprint's there, you can't put a box blueprint on top of it. Now, once you have this set up, you can start taking your boxes. You're going to turn them sideways like so, so you can fit more in here. And you just go across. And if I space this out correctly, I'll fit seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven boxes all the way across. And then if you have it to where it's up against the wall, obviously you can't get around behind it. And you lose some space behind it, but that's okay. You still set up for 21 boxes. Seven across the three rows being the 21 box. But if you have access to the other side of your shelf system like so, you can come around over here and do the exact same thing and set up uh, another row of seven on each side of the shelves. And you go from uh, 21 to a 42 box setup. Now, a lot of people might be thinking that is a lot of boxes. I don't use that many boxes. Okay. Others like me are going to want their boxes to be sorted in a very specific way. The more boxes you have, the more sorting options you have. So that is one way to do your shelf system. Now in my pyramid base, the shelf system is not squared off and, and nice and neat, neat, neat like that. It's not squared off like this. It's on an angle. So now to set up the angle and bring it in just a little bit so I can get around it. So you see how that's angled, which is how it's set up on the inside of my pyramid base, which obviously I'm looking at the direction. It's not there because I'm in creative. Can't just turn this that way. And that may have something to do with, you know, if I come over here, I can rotate it however I wish. But if you have your floor set one way, which is why, which is how this is set. Then your uh, the rest of your floors are not going to fit the way you kind of would like them to. You know, just turn them sideways and going. So I'm going to try and get on top of this wall, and I'm going to use the corner floor piece, and I want I want it to go right here in the middle. So with it right here in the middle, it's probably easiest to stand on top of it. You already built it. If not, you can just do a ground. 
but you put one going along the wall, sticking out in a point, and then two pointing back in towards the center, squaring off the edges. Now, you don't put a... I mean, you could do another one right here if you wanted, or... I'll find it in a second. And you put your floor in like so. And you go back to... Doing that. And... Now that's where I'll square it off because I'm only going to go this, this this many sections. You always can make it shorter if you want. Uh, that is all, uh, or ba based on how much space you have. That's all up to you. Now I will go up here to the very top, and once again, uh, basically rinse and repeat. Okay, that's a uh, holy trap. And then filling in that last square. And like I said, you can use all just corner, little corner floors or an actual square section of floor. It's the same amount of grass planks, whether it be two or four, it's all going to count to the exact same. But if you're on the angle like this, You're going to be able to fit more box because of that angle. And I'm very particular about how this looks. I'm doing it a little bit faster than I would in game. Because in game I can mess with the blueprints and change them and it's easier to delete them. But here for the purpose of the video, I'm just trying to get them laid down. Spaced out as close as I can just to make sure that I can fit at least 10. Because you should fit 10 across here. Uh, you might be able to fit 11. You see there's a lot of space. If I wiggle them, I probably could fit 11, but I'm not worried about that at this point. For the, for the, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So, like I said, if you don't have access to the back side of this, well, there's 10 per row. There are three rows. And it does look pretty iffy from underneath like this. But once you put boxes on and stuff, you can't, you're not really looking through it anyway. Now, I am going to get up on the top. I want to test this. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to test what it looks like with just and it won't even take. So maybe that is why I used it before because it wouldn't allow me to do it. And like I said, the same thing with that, that shelf system over here. If you have access to the back side of this, you can fit another 10 per row. So you're basically getting 20 per row at three rows is 60 boxes. If you're like me and you have a whole bunch of bases, you probably don't want to put that many boxes in one particular base. But if you only have one or two bases and you need you know, your main base has every box has one item and one item only in it, that may be what you want to do is put in, you know, 60 boxes and just spread them out and have extra boxes. Because like when you did the pond update, they, they entered with the pond update, they introduced many new substances such as eelgrass strands, lily pad wax, water boatman fins, diving bell spider chunks, sunken uh, fish bone, those kind of things. And I, I didn't want to just put them in some random box. They had to have their own box. That's that's just how I work. And <clears throat> now for doing pallet storage, unlike what you saw on the aircraft carrier, I actually don't like spreading my pallets out along the ground. I like stacking them up in... Uh, find spaces so this one is set up you can go ahead for the grass pallets you can set up and build your walls and all of your floors at one time you because the grass pallets are so big one thing i would would recommend is putting wherever the back side of the storage system is put in the little handrails like this and it will keep you from having them hang off the back end and looking all kinds of uh, uneven. This will make it to where when you put them up there, you can have a nice even presentation of how they're going to sit. Now, it doesn't matter which way you turn these. You're not going to fit three in this little three section spot. You need four sections for three. 
So you see, even if I try to get him as close as possible, it's not, there's not even close. So what I then try to do is with it turned sideways like this, where I can have that nice line right down the middle of the uh, blueprint, I line it up right on this seam of the grass plank. You see it's going red like that because I have those uh, handrails up there. Okay, maybe I don't go right on the scene. Go to the side of it. <laughs> Not enough space for it. Also, too, the handrails in the back do provide you with kind of a visual guide for when, if you want to get them all spaced correctly. And then if you look across the front, it has a nice uniform uh, depth as far as how far they're sticking out. None of them are sticking out way past the rest. They may not be 100% perfect, but that's pretty close. And that's all thanks to me falling into the pond. Hang on, let me swim back around. That's one problem with working near the pond. Did you have a risk of falling in? But putting the, uh, the little handrails... You don't even have to complete the blueprint. If it was just a, if this was the normal game, that would be a blueprint right there. I could go back behind it and delete that out if I wanted to. I didn't have to put it there. But it gives you a nice presentation. You see they're all right up against the, uh, the handrails up here. Now, do, and I'm going to actually separate these two. There. And one thing when you're doing the, for the weed stem palette, which is what I'm working on now is weed stem storage, is really, you don't want to do this. Maybe set up the blueprint to get your, your third wall in place, your other wall in place, and then delete the blueprints. Because if not, when you go to place it, you're going to get a little frustrated that this won't take underneath there because the weeds, <coughs> sorry, the sprigs that are making the railings for the weed stems are technically blocked by the grass floor. So before I even do that, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to get my handrails because everything for me it all has looked quite nice and I'm going to delete out the which if it was just a blueprint be a quick little delete and it's done now you could maybe squeeze five in here but that just looks a little too cluttered to me um so I go with four I space them out you know a little bit but you see I'm trying to get it to where it's just short of that back little handrail And I spaced them out too much. That can be a problem sometimes. A lot of times you'll see I'll we'll go from the far end and then just come in just a bit. And I might even leave a get the bigger gap in the middle because you always put a light right there. And then once you have those placed, then do the, the middle floor back with the railings. And see with that gap right there on the floor now, if I wanted to, if I need to light by my pallets, and I can get it in pretty close because there's a little bit of a space right there. And you know, I have light, or I can just mount the, the wall sconces on each end. Because these will take right here. Yeah, it's up to you how you want to light your uh, area. But same thing, we're going to get these laid out. And then I like to jump up top just because it's a little bit easier to see kind of what you're doing when you're up here like this. And now for this one, because the wall doesn't extend any further up, you got to put the railing on the side too just to have it that that same kind of clean look back to 
how that came out. I'd always like to be there. And then just using, you know, W and D forward, back, until it, W and S. Until it's, it's just the way you want. Not quite sure why that's not taken. Character out of the way. There. And that is how I do, in a kind of confined space, the 12 uh, pallet setup. Now, the bottom row isn't set up quite as cleanly as the next two rows, because you see the next two rows have a very uniform front edge and then the bottom row is all kinds of screwy but I was going through it kind of fast had I taken my time I would have probably pushed that one back towards the railing just a little bit but having the railing up there and putting your pallets right up against the railing allows you to have that nice clean look and then of course you can also mount lights on the side you can put a light right here in the center just so you can see what you're doing because the game does get kind of dark at when it gets later in the day Or you could even, if you really wanted to, like you saw in one of my my main base, you can mount the light directly onto this pallet. So there's several different options. You can do the same with over here with the boxes, with the, the lights. You can even put the lights on the front of the box if you want, or on the side rail, depending on how you have your area lit up. But that is how I set up these shelves for whether it be the diagonal, um, which will work for these pallets. If, that, if that's all you have, you can set up the same way. Put the pallets in um and then just keep going this is how i set up my shelves in all my bases to maximize storage without having everything spread out all over all over the place unless the base such as my pyramid or inverted pyramid should i say or my aircraft carrier has space for it but if you guys like this kind of content and would like to see more of it don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button i have started streaming on this youtube channel so by subscribing to the channel you will get notifications when i go live you can catch a live stream uh stop in say hi ask me questions uh, about whatever game i'm playing whether it be grounded or something else that i'm playing um <clears throat> but until the next video y'all have a good one